Hello, this is Justin Williams with the Wolfpacker Podcast. I'm joined tonight, as always, by co-host Matt Carter, and we will get cracking on the 105-73 to NC State loss at Florida State tonight on Wednesday night, January 13th. But before we start this podcast, this episode, this episode is brought to you in part by JFQ Lending. With interest rates below 3%, there has never been a better time to lock in a low fixed interest rate on your mortgage. You'll never need to think about refinancing again. Set it and forget it. And with JFQ Lending, you are guaranteed to get the highest level of customer service. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and over 3,000 five-star reviews. Give Hunter Clawson a call today at 480-513-3992 or email Hunter directly at hclawson at jfqlending.com. That's H-C-L-A-U-S-S-E-N at jfqlending.com. JFQ Lending, Inc., Equal Access Lender, licensed in over 40 states, www.jfqlending.com. And while you're at it, head over to thewolfpacker.com and use promo code PAC60 for a free 60-day trial on all of our premium content news and analysis. Get a taste for all the premiums, good stuff that we have on there, and then eventually you'll want to continue to be a subscriber. So use that promo code PAC60. That's promo code PAC60 for a free 60-day trial. Uh, Plenty more basketball ahead of us and that's one thing that we're going to be talking about today on today's episode um so go ahead and take advantage of that promo deal while it's still around also please be sure to subscribe rate and review this podcast wherever you listen to us we're on apple Podcasts, spotify google play and you can always stream us on the wolfpacker.com um but again if you use one of the podcast streaming services or you listen to us on an app on your phone be sure to hit the subscribe button and give us some reviews And you can also watch this podcast on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, the Wolfpacker YouTube channel. So please be sure to subscribe to the Wolfpacker YouTube channel so you can get all the updates. You get the post-game press conferences immediately uploaded as soon as they're over. These podcasts, highlights, all that good stuff. All right. So Matt, where should we begin with the 105-73 to road loss to Florida State, the defending ACC regular season champions probably were a front runner to win the 2020 ACC tournament before it was canceled uh, midway through all the way back in March of 2020. Uh, And we were talking about before this game tonight that, you know, this isn't necessarily the same Florida state team that, you know, won all those games in 2019, 20 and went on to earn the one seed in the ACC tournament probably would have been a high seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, But that did not seem like the case tonight. It seemed like a characteristic uh, Leonard Hamilton Seminoles team that, you know, just threw bodies at you had a lot of tall bodies, a ton of length. I think out of the 10 man rotation, their shortest players, six foot four, um, I mean, they had a couple seven footers out there that clearly were given NC state problems in the paint, both on offense and defense. Um, And clearly, I mean, on the offensive end, Florida state was pretty much able to get whatever they wanted all night and all pretty much all their shots were going in. They shot a hundred percent from the free throw line. They shot 67% from the three point line, 12 of 18 from beyond the arc and shot 71% from the field, 41 of 58. Um, you know, obviously some of that is the fault of the NC state defense. And some of that is a matter of just having a hot hand. Um, but this was a Florida state team that, you know, we look around the country. A lot of teams come back from these two week type of pauses and breaks due to COVID and whatnot. And a lot of teams come out looking rusty. They need to have a couple games under their belt to get into the rhythm of play. We saw that with NC state back in December. But this Florida State team showed no signs of rust. In fact, they looked fresh and ready to go Wednesday night. Um, so what, what do you make of this if you're NC State? Um, you know, what went wrong other than just saying everything, Matt? And where do you go from here? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> a lot went wrong, obviously. Um, you just can't really, nothing went right for NC State. It was one of those games 
NC State, every single area. You mentioned some of the shooting numbers. Giving up 70.7% shooting in a game is, you know, Kevin Keats let a little four-letter word slip when he was describing how well. Appropriately, may I add. Yeah, yeah. But um, I would contend that Florida State maybe could have shot somewhere in that ballpark based on the shots they were getting. Even the three-pointers, you look at it at 12 of 18, you say, wow, that's incredible. How many of those three-pointers were contested? How many of them were wide open? Uh, NC State just didn't play good defense tonight. Florida State was clicking, but they were aided and abetted by NC State defense on this particular game. And and not having Manny Bates made a a tough matchup even tougher. He didn't make any difference in this game. They still would have lost lopsided fashion but it made it even even tougher matchup if you will but if you just look at the numbers across the board despite florida state shooting almost 25 percent better over 25 percent better they still out rebounded nc state 32 to 19. um both teams had 10 second chance points that shouldn't happen when one team shooting 70.7 percent from the field and the other less than 45 percent 27 to 7 on fast break points 52 to uh, 28 on points in the paint um 16 to 9 on uh point or yeah 16 to 9 on points off turnovers just the butt whooping it was florida state's night it was not nc state's night you combine the two, you got a thirty, uh, whatever it was, thirty point plus butt whipping. Tip your hat to Florida State. Acknowledge that you have a lot of work to do on NC State side, and this is one I, I know. When we talked about the Miami game, I said I wouldn't flush it. This one I would flush. There's no there's nothing to be really good to be gained from this one. I would flush it um, and move on to the next one. But I think the main thing is the defense has to be. It was just one of those games where on one end, you felt like NC State at time they couldn't even get the ball inbounds sometimes. They had to use a timeout once to get it inbounds. They turned it over a couple of times trying to inbound the ball. And on the other end, as I told you, and I think in a text message, it looked like NC State with the uh, scout team defense trying, you know, just going through the walkthrough while Florida State was working on their sets in the offense. I think you actually compared them to chairs, Matt. Oh, um, yeah. Well, basically, it looked like they were trying, they were helping Florida State kind of, you know, sometimes when you do a walkthrough in practice, you kind of theoretically, okay, this is what it's going to look like, you know. Right. They look like the defense in that situation. And, uh, I know Kevin Keach well enough to know that he takes tremendous pride in defense. That's actually one of the biggest indicators of whether or not you're going to play. Uh, he's not. He's not going to put up with this. Once he, see, particularly when he sees the tape, he's going to. You know, I probably would not want to be in practice on Friday when they get back to practice. No, no. Uh, I think they're going to they're going to have some tired legs, and uh, I think they're going to get a lot of suicides because we know Keats likes to run his team a lot already when he's frustrated, but after a game like this, you can expect a lot to come before NC State has a quick turnaround against Georgia Tech this Saturday afternoon in PNC Arena. Um, But with that said, you know, you make the point that you might want to just throw this one away. I would counter that, and I asked Keats about, you know, kind of where do you go from here in the postgame? What do you tell your team after a game like this, and how do you try to spin it into somehow a learning experience. Can you get any type of value from a game like this? And, you know, I think there is something to say about if you're going to lose in a lopsided fashion, or if you're going to lose by a considerable amount and you're not playing good ball, you know, there is something to kind of just getting manhandled like this, kind of maybe a wake-up call for, you know, let's face it, half the roster is basically freshmen. So you never know what, some of the underclassmen on this team could take out of a game like this. Um, maybe it becomes a wake-up call. Maybe NC State wakes up from here and turns it around in the upcoming tough stretch because I've talked about repetitively on the site over the past 
week or really ever since the Miami game is that NC State, they're in the thick of the toughest stretch of its season right now in January. And so they're really at a crossroads. Are they going to implode after a performance like this and let this type of loss continue over the next three games um, against Georgia Tech, a team that they've really struggled against since Keats has arrived. I don't think Keats has beaten Josh Pastner since entering the ACC. Uh, then you've got upcoming road matchups against Virginia and North Carolina. Virginia, the preseason league favorite. Carolina, a team that's going to be looking for revenge in the Dean Dome after what NC State was able to do in PNC Arena in December. So we will see. I want to take you back to, I think, the first play in the game that I think changed the how it played out from there. And that was just over a little bit over five minutes into the game. You know, clearly – the biggest game changer was an hour before tip off when we found out that Manny Bates was not going to be able to suit up tonight, considering that's the tallest player on your roster and considering the length of Florida state, that's uh, one of the guys that you would least like to lose before a game like this against a very athletic and long Florida state team. But then on top of that, getting to my point here with five minutes into the first half, your fifth year senior forward, DJ Funderburk, has a physical play underneath the rim off of a Thomas Allen or excuse me, a Jericho Hellams miss from three. He thought he got fouled. He let the ref know about it. And guess what? It's a rather empty stadium. The referee heard it immediately, gave him a technical foul. Funderburk had to go to the bench. And from that point on Florida state from 1501 to in the next 10 minute stretch, Florida state rattled off a 24 to four run that changed it from a 15 to 11 game five minutes in to a 39 to 15 game with 620 to go in the first half. Now, I don't think, you know, Funderburk came back before that stretch was over, but when you took Funderburk off the court, you had to put in one of your freshman bigs to even have any type of size, anybody taller than Jericho Helms on the floor, who's six, seven and was tasked with, you know, guarding and being guarded by, seven footers at times tonight. Um, but that really seemed to kind of be a momentum swing in this game. And from that point on, I mean, when Florida state's able to rattle off a run like that, you're down 24 with some time left in the first half. NC state went into halftime down 25 points. Florida state scored, I think 57 points in the first half. Well on their well on pace to score hundred points as they did Wednesday night. Um, you know, it's just, you kind of get the shell shock factor to it where once you go down by 20 points in the first half, you really start to kind of get that feeling of we can't come back no matter what we do. I mean, NC state in that last six minute stretch, NC state hit some tough shots and they tried to maybe get back into the game and shrink the gap before the first half. But it seemed like no matter what happened, Florida state just had an answer on the offensive end. Well, yeah, that goes back to you, you can't come back if you're not playing defense. And they, they needed stops, and they just weren't getting stops. But that, that was my in my quick hits column that you can find on the site with my notes. You identify what I I called the play of the game with the DJ Funderburg technical foul. And right in the immediate aftermath of that, it was a 13-2 run followed by, as you mentioned, and I don't think 11-2 run. I hate to go all Jeff Bajelic on everybody. Uh, if, if people remember the former Wake Forest coach was famous for saying, well, other than that 25 to two run, it was, it was a close basketball game where, you know, that, you know, FSU steamrolled NC State in that run. And then, you know, that NC State never had any, I mean, I don't think they got closer to within 25 points once the league got up. Uh, to the to the halftime margin of about 25 points or 27 points so yeah I would just I, that was the one little thing I was surprised about it that we didn't NC State never even went on a run um in this game never went on a run um never had even like a 9-2 spurt a kind of you know nothing of the sort um, you know, I would say this, Leonard Hamilton said that they practiced the last three or four days. I think you told me Kevin Keith joked that they've been practicing the whole time. It sure looked like they have been practicing 
the whole time and not three or four days. That was a well-oiled, well-prepared, well-rested Florida State team, it looks like. Um, so but I think the one key for NC State is we kind of wrap this up and put a bow and, and get to a desperate attempt to find some game balls in this situation. Uh, NC State's got to find the energy again. That's one. I, you know, I know Kevin Coos said that he felt like the team was mentally strong and played hard to the end, but maybe they did have good energy and Florida State's energy was just so off the charts. It looked like NC State didn't have as much energy, but uh, I think we all thought that clearly NC State needed to have a bit more bounce in his step against Miami, and I kind of wondered if that was the case a little bit against Florida State as well. Uh, it, at least to match the energy that Florida State brought tonight. So one thing I'll be looking for is Saturday. I don't know about you, Justin, is the energy level. How, what kind of energy is NC State going to come out with? What kind of urgency are they going to come out with again? Yeah, we, let's say the game played. We should preface this by we don't know if this game is going to be played Saturday against Georgia Tech. It's going to be touchy, and it sounds like the Yellow Jackets will be shorthanded if it is played. But if the game is played, you know, what kind of urgency are we going to see from NC State? What kind of energy are we going to see from the Wolfpack? Well, NC State's going to have to find a way to bring it on a Saturday early afternoon tip-off against a, you know, a Georgia Tech team that they've had struggles against in the past, but not necessarily a sexy opponent, a marquee matchup like you'd expect in this Florida State game or the Clemson game or a rivalry game against Carolina. I'll tell you real quick, a real good backcourt at Georgia Tech, too, with Jose Alvarado and Michael DeVoe. So, uh, if they're playing, that's going to be a challenge. Well, we will see. NC State's got its work cut out for them in the upcoming weeks. Um, yeah, I think one one last stat before we get to the game, game balls, Matt, that I wanted to point out that, you know, other than Florida State's phenomenal shooting night, uh, Florida State out-rebounded NC State 32-19, to 26-10 on the defensive glass. Um, I mean, look, there wasn't many defensive rebounds for NC State to get tonight because clearly most of Florida State shots were going in. But, um, you know, NC State's a team that's not a strong rebounding team, but they have to find ways to shrink the rebounding margin even against some of these longer, more physical teams, as they did against Carolina. Carolina wasn't able to dominate them on the rebounding. Uh, they were just able to slightly beat them. That was a win for NC State. Tonight, that was not the case. Florida State was dominant pretty much in all facets of the game. Uh, I guess if you could maybe spin one positive for NC State in the box score is that they finally ended their streak of losing the turnover margin. They tied Florida State 11-11. to 11. 11 turnovers for both teams. Um, you know, NC State wants to create more turnovers than that. They probably don't want to turn the ball over that that much. And some of those Florida State turnovers came late in the game. But nonetheless, at least it ends that streak for NC State. So, Matt, let's get to the game balls, and then we will close this up. Yeah, I would say, too, real quick with the turnovers, it, 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 it's a small victory because, as I noted before, FSU still had a 16-9 to 9 advantage in points off turnovers, right? So, um, yeah, that's something Kevin Keats talked about. I think, how many, what did he say? They want about 30 of their offense to come off of turnovers? That's right. Yeah. You know, having nine of your uh, 73 points, that's not a third, I'm pretty sure. I, You know. That's a I lot do- too. That's that's bullish. I mean, I thought that was pretty eye opening. That that's the goal going into the night is that mm-hmm. a third of your points are going to come off turnovers. I don't know if you can expect to get that reliably in ACC play on a night yeah, in night in basis. I was a little surprised by that too. But uh, game balls, um, you know, second straight game where I thought Thomas Allen off the bench. You know, maybe that might be the best role for him. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he would love to be starting, but. You know, he's shooting really well, kind of quietly. He made four or five threes for the second game. Um, finished with 16 points after having 14 last Saturday against Miami, his first two games in double digits. That was two points off his career high. Um, you know, there might be something to him 
coming off the bench. I don't know. Or maybe you, you look to bring him back back into the starting lineup because, you know, quite frankly, Cam Hayes and Shaquille Moore, you know, kind of showed a little bit of that freshman in them the last couple of games. They're going to be great players, I think, for NC State, but they're also freshmen. They're going to have ups and downs and peaks and valleys and um, – and, I, and, you know, it sounds like Braxton Beverly kind of battling once again some health issues from what Kevin Keats was saying after the game. And, you know, he, he only gave him 17 minutes and, and kind of struggled again. Um, so maybe Allen gets another chance to start. But uh, I was pretty impressed with Thomas Allen in this game. Finished at the rim a couple of times, too, which was good to see as well. So he gets my game ball. Well, I think he really – stole the only NC State player that's deserving of a game ball, Matt. I mean, you look at this box score up and down. I mean, you can make a case for maybe a couple guys. I mean, I, if I if if we could do this, I'd really want to give it to Raekwon Evans of Florida State. I mean, 24 points in 19 minutes, 9 of 11 from the field. He was, he was a problem for NC State all night. But I'm not going to do that. It's cheating. It's against the rules. So, uh, I'll go with Devin Daniels. I mean, he – has struggled with turnovers in these past two games, had three apiece in the last two contests. And tonight, just one turnover, uh, 14 points on six of 12 shooting from the field, not bad. And one of three on threes, um, you know, again, about on par of what you'd expect from Daniels. Um, yeah, see, I thought there were the logical other game ball candidate. Th- three, assi- well, I would love to hear it. Let me, I mean, I guess I'll say with Daniels, you also got to give him credit because it seemed like, I mean, not just Daniels, but a lot of these NC State players, they were taking some hard fouls. Like when Florida State fouled, they they got their money's worth for these for some of these fouls, which a lot of them were just you know non shooting fouls that was just a simple inbounds pass. But the the impact of just hammering a guy like they're on the football field, I mean, it's got to have some value to the Seminoles. But uh, no, I I thought Jericho Hallam. When, when NC State was in the game, it was because Jericho Helen made his first three shots and he finished with 12 points on 5-11 a season, led the team with six rebounds. Yeah, I mean. Figured he was the logical get, second game ball. I mean, I mean, it, I was looking at him, you know, two of four. He Two of four, those first two threes went down in the first minute and a half. Uh, you know, if you look at him the rest of the way, I think after those first five minutes, he probably goes uh, two of eight from the field, zero of two from three. You know, act. Look, credit to him because he was tasked with a really, really. He had a lot on his plate tonight. I mean, two seven footers on that Florida State team, big athletic guys too. I mean, he's six foot seven and getting tasked with handling those guys in the paint for a lot of the night. Considering Funderburk only played what seventeen minutes, so yeah, I mean not. They can they can share the game ball. I don't think they I don't think they would want any part of any game balls tonight. Really, I don't think anybody on the team would want a game ball. So uh, we'll we'll sit we'll save that for a rainy day. But uh, that'll do it for us tonight. Recapping the NC State 105 to 73 loss to Florida State. We'll see if the pack can bounce back this Saturday against Georgia Tech and PNC Arena. I believe that's a 2 p.m. tip, if not a 4 p.m. tip. It'll be on RSN for those watching it on TV. Um, please be sure to follow us on social media. You can follow us on Twitter at The Wolfpacker. You can follow me personally at Justin H. Will. Give us a like on Facebook, NC State Wolfpack on the Wolfpacker.com. Of course, please remember to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you listen to us. We're on Google Play, Spotify, Apple Podcast app. You can always listen to us on the Wolfpacker.com. And please be sure to use promo code PAC60. That's promo code PAC60 for a free 60-day trial on all of our premium content, news, and analysis on thewolfpacker.com. For Matt Carter, this is Justin Williams, and this has been the Wolfpacker Podcast.